In the middle of a busy airport lies a relaxing retreat where there's free food, free drinks, and stunning views. That's right, I'm talking about the exclusive airport lounges. When I first started traveling, I didn't even know these existed. In this video, I'll guide you through what type of airport lounges exist, video footage of the lounge itself, and how exactly you can get in. In some cases, for free as well. In general, there's three ways you can get in. So you could fly first class internationally and you would be granted free entry. Keep in mind that this does not apply to first class domestic flights. The second way you can get in is simply by paying an entry fee. And this generally costs anywhere from 50 to $65 at the time of recording. But some lounges won't even allow you to pay to get in such as the Centurion Lounge. And the last method of entry is via travel credit cards, which do have the potential to get you in for free. And yes, they usually do have annual fees. However, these cards often have various travel credits and many times it can offset the annual fee completely, making them technically free if you utilize the credits wisely. There is generally a few different types of airport lounges. So there's sort of a signature lounge for a credit card issuer such as the Amex Centurion or the Chase Sapphire Lounge. Then you have the airline specific lounges such as the United Club Lounge or the Admirals Club by American Airlines. And finally, you have the Priority Pass lounges, which is the easiest to get into and happens to be the largest airport lounge access program in the world. Let's start with my favorite airport lounge, which is the Centurion Lounge. This particular Centurion was at GFK Terminal 4, which I think has a ton of amenities, which we'll talk about very shortly. This is the flagship airport lounge from the credit card issuer American Express. As I said earlier, you cannot pay to get in or fly first class on a particular airline. You need to have the American Express Platinum card to get in. And there's roughly about 13 Centurion locations around the world, and they're constantly building a new one in a new city. The ambience here is modern, it's sleek and relaxing, and there's always a ton of natural light coming in at Centurion lounges. Earlier, I mentioned that you can get into these airport lounges for free, and that's through the use of travel credit cards like the Platinum card. And while the card does have an annual fee of $695, which technically doesn't make it free, you have all these credits on the card, such as an airline credit, an Uber credit, a digital entertainment credit for Hulu and Disney, a hotel credit, a Saxon Fifth credit, all of these credits combined will allow you to offset the annual fee completely or sometimes even come out ahead of the annual fee. Let's talk about some of the amenities. There's a Equinox Body Lab where you can get a free massage for 15 minutes or you can jump into the recovery compression boots for your legs. There's also self-guided meditation and stretching sessions available as well. One of my favorite features of the JFK Centurion Lounge is that they have a speakeasy inside. Now, there are multiple bar areas available within the Centurion Lounge, which has two different floors at JFK. The Speakeasy is a really unique experience that brings you back to the 1920s Prohibition era. The drinks were great, and as always, all the cocktails and beers on the menu are included. They're free. And that goes for all of the other drinks in the other bar areas within the Centurion. I am personally not a big drinker myself, but I had a great experience and time here. Sometimes airport lounge food can be hit or miss. The food inside Centurion lounges are always a hit. The chefs in these lounges, I would say, are Michelin star level quality chefs tasked with creating quality food in bulk, which is not easy. The quality of meals here, I would say, is better than the experience at most of the restaurants within the airport itself. In terms of whether or not this card is worth getting just for the lounge access, I think that if you travel three to four times or more a year, this card is absolutely worth getting for its benefits. It's not only the lounge access, you get hotel status as well and a slew of different various travel benefits. Just make sure you pay attention to your credits and use them wisely before the annual fee hits. Travel credit cards like this one doesn't really make sense for budget travelers who only, you know, travel once or twice a year. The coffee here is self-service. All the food, drinks, and amenities are free here. Overall, this is a great lounge and I would give it a 4.5 out of 5 overall experience. Lounges like this one are the sole reason why I show up to the airport three hours early. Next one up are the Sapphire lounges that are relatively new. This particular one was in JFK Terminal 4 as well, right next to the Amex lounge actually. This is another signature lounge from a credit card issuer Chase, JP Morgan. Although it's a relatively new lounge, I have to say the food and amenities are very impressive. 
Most of the time, breakfast at these airport lounges, even the high-end ones, are very mediocre. Chase did a fantastic job here. Everything was presented very well. It was full of flavor. It was seasoned well. Great garnishes. They, they just did excellent. Most of the time, creating eggs for breakfast in bulk at these airport lounges is a bit of a problem. At the Sapphire Lounge, they served them in individual bowls, which I think was smart. And it was just garnished very well. Had roasted red peppers, had tomatoes, had cheese on it. It just tasted great and very fresh. And the staff here are very well trained. They're courteous, they're very helpful, and you will not see any plates lying around for too long here. There's a few different ways to get into this lounge, but the main method is to have a Chase Sapphire Reserve card, which grants you free access into the Sapphire lounges. The card has an annual fee of $550, but just like the American Express Platinum card, there's all these credits available to offset the annual fee. The second method of getting in is what I use, which is if you have Priority Pass, that grants you one free access pass per year. I have priority pass access from my American Express Platinum card here, which is how I was able to get in for free. And the last method of accessing this lounge is to simply pay to get in. And though it's not cheap, at least they offer this option, unlike other lounges like the Centurion, which does not even allow you to pay to enter their lounges. I really just love the modern and very comfortable, luxurious layout of this airport lounge. And one of the amenities available at this particular location is that it has a reflection room which is a quiet space where you can essentially just pray in peace what's interesting about this location is that you can scan a qr code for drinks and any a la carte items that you want so there's already items out that you can just grab that's already cooked which are all fantastic options however if you want it like a burger and fries or their specialty noodles you have that option a la carte you can just scan the qr code for that and this applies to alcoholic drinks at the bar this is all included and in terms of the ambience it's very similar to the centurion lounge there's lots of open airy places the decor is very modern as well i just wish there were more outlets to uh you know charge your laptop when you're doing work i'm super impressed by their lunch menu they had pork dishes beef dishes plenty of vegetarian dishes that were actually very good so they really thought about everyone that might enter the lounge and they wanted to really create a luxurious and pleasant experience right before your flight so fantastic job by the uh, sapphire lounge team coffee of course is self-service they even had iced coffee as an option the bathrooms are very nice they're very modern and new looking even individual booths and uh, bidets, which is uh, something you don't usually see in U.S. Uh, restrooms. And they do have showers at this location, which is very nice. Just remember to book it ahead of time. It can get filled up very quickly. So all in all, a great experience at this lounge. I would rate it a 4.5 out of 5, just like the Centurion, just for its great food, great amenities, modern decor, and very attentive staff. The next type of lounge is an airline-specific lounge. So today we'll be doing the Delta Sky Club. But aside from Delta, there are United and American Airline lounges as well. So this Delta Sky Club was in JFK Terminal 4. There's actually two Sky Clubs in Terminal 4. This is the smaller one. So there's a couple of ways to get in. You have to fly first or business class on an international flight. You would be automatically allowed in. In general, you can't get in flying domestic first class flights unless it's Delta One flights. The second way of getting in is using credit cards. There's two ways here, actually. If you have the Delta Reserve card, you can get into the lounge. That card doesn't really make sense for most people to keep long term. And if you have the Amex Platinum card and you happen to be flying Delta, you can get into the Delta lounges just for yourself. I would say the food at airline specific lounges are pretty good for the most part. They are a step below the signature lounges from credit card issuers like Chase and Amex, like the Centurion. However, I find the food to be good enough. It's, uh, you know, it can be a little inconsistent sometimes, but for the most part, there's plenty of options. I think on this particular visit, the hot meals, the uh, hot entree options were kind of mediocre for me. Um, but in general, they are decent, at least on par with uh, airport restaurant food. And in terms of the drink options, they're mostly self-service, but you can get any type of soda that you want, any flavored salsa water as well. There's machines for that, as well as uh, coffee. In terms of the ambience, it's very business-like. It's kind of upscale. I like that they have outlets almost everywhere near every seat. 
And one of my favorite features about this lounge is the Delta Sky Deck, which allows you to have breathtaking views of the airport and allows you to be sort of outside while having a drink as well. The entire Sky Deck is enclosed by glass and there's also a heated component at the uh, ceiling as well to keep you warm during the uh, winter months. One of the strengths of this particular lounge is that it's a great space for getting work done. Like I love these private work booths and there's also a dedicated business work area. And again, I love the fact that they have outlets next to pretty much every single seat. In terms of the alcoholic drink, some of it is free while others such as like cocktails are not free. You would have to pay for that. And of course, self-service coffee machines. I really think that every single lounge has like the same machines. So overall, my thoughts about this lounge is that it's a great workspace for business travelers. And I think that the food options are pretty decent. They're good. Overall, I would give this lounge a four out of five experience. There's minor things here and there that could have been improved to make the experience better, but overall a great airport lounge. The last type of airport lounges we'll be talking about today are priority pass lounges. This one in particular is called prime class lounge. However, Priority Pass has over 1,300 airport lounges, making it the largest airport lounge access program in the world. There is at least 11 different travel credit cards that offer Priority Pass. I'm not gonna go through each one of them, but I'll list it on screen now so you can pause the video and take a look at it. I would say that some of the common ones people get, I've already discussed the Amex Platinum and the Chase Sapphire Reserve, but also a third, the Capital One Venture X is also very popular for good reason. I'll explain why in a second. The food in Priority Pass lounges tend to be very subpar, it's very hit and miss. The domestic ones tend to be not so great, whereas the international ones tend to be a little bit better. I will say one positive thing about these Priority Pass lounges, there's a lot of grab and go items that, you know, when you head to a new destination, a new hotel, you might not have a lot of like packaged water or snacks or, or fruits and things like that. So these lounges offer plenty of that for you to just stuff in your bag to go. I think the Capital One Venture X is the card that makes the most sense for Priority Pass. If you compare the annual fee to the travel credits available, it's a no-brainer. It's basically a free card and a free way to get entry into all these Priority Pass lounges. Uh, it's $395 per year, but then you get a $300 annual travel credit and then 10,000 miles per year, which is at a minimum worth $100. So the math there by itself means that you're getting paid five bucks to keep the card and to gain access to Priority Pass. I think having Priority Pass access for most people is enough by itself. There's plenty of locations and chances are there's at least one Priority Pass location at your destinative flight. Um, and it's, it's good enough. It's better than sitting out and waiting at the gate. As you can see from this footage, there's plenty of pastries here. There's curated meats that were pretty good. Plenty of bread and different snacks, different fruits. There's also some hot foods as well all the drinks that you can have for free. You know, there's uh, alcoholic drinks as well. So overall, like a very good experience, much better than domestic Priority Pass lounges. I would rank my experience at domestic Priority Pass lounges as a two and a half out of five, whereas the international ones are closer to three and a half out of five, making my final ranking for Priority Pass lounges as a three out of five experience. So overall, I think travel credit cards are the best and easiest way to gain access to these lounges. So the Amex Platinum is best for people who want to get into the most amount of airport lounges with just one card, whereas the Venture X makes sense for your everyday person who just wants priority pass. I hope this video was helpful and insightful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks.